Good morning and welcome to this rather auspicious occasion. Of course, uh, Harry Seekin will be with us very soon for the unveiling of the statue of the great Tony Hancock. Do we have many genuine Hancock fans with us this morning? Yes! Well, it's great. It's lovely to be in such company. It really is. Can I just have a little poll around here and find... Uh, excuse the traffic, by the way. Sorry about that. Um, apart from the blood donor, what are our favourite Hancock sketches? Let's, let's just take a little poll. P put your hand up and shout out to me. I mean, mine is the missing page. I just love the missing page. On the aeroplane, yeah, with Kenneth Williams. Okay, that's one. Cool. What do you like, sir? He goes into the woods. He goes wow. into the woods. The wild man of the woods. That's excellent. Anybody else? Is the, sorry? Yeah. Of course, that's the one that uh, Paul Merton did recently on TV. I didn't actually catch that. Did he do a good job of that? Or not exactly Hancock? No I think in fairness to Paul, he wasn't actually trying to emulate Hancock. He was just interpreting the uh, Galton and Simpson script, wasn't he? If you've seen the original with Hancock, you can't help but you know, When Tony gets up and does that speech, it yeah, it was a one-off. What about you, sir? Oh, the radio ham. It is not raining also here in Tokyo. Yeah, what, what's your favourite line? Okay, all right. Sunday afternoon at home. And if Kathy takes a walk for her dinner, but absolutely terrible, and says, your gravy wasn't worth getting up for. Well, I ate it, yes, and he said, you went my nasty. Yeah, I thought my mother's gravy was bad, but at least it moved around a little bit. Yeah, excellent <laughs> stuff. How would you like to hear some Sunday afternoon at home? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know how well it'll come out this morning, but I think it would be nice, in fact, to actually hear some Tony. Uh, I'll introduce you to the dignitaries that we have here today, and our good friend and colleague, Dave Ismay, will be with us very soon. So hopefully, I'm not quite sure exactly how we're going to get the traffic to be quiet, but Mervyn... Can we try some Sunday afternoon at home? Thank you. I don't know. Oh, I'm fed up. All right. What? Why well, don't you shut up moaning and let me get on with the paper? Well, I'm fed up. So you just said. Well, so I am. Look, so am I fed up. And so is Bill fed up. We're all fed up. So shut up moaning and make the best of it. Are you sure it's only two o'clock? No, it's one minute past two now. One minute past two. And the time drag. Oh, I do hate Sundays. I'll be glad when it's over. Adrian! Trying to have the war, just sitting here looking at you lot. Every Sunday it's the same. Nowhere to go, nothing to do. Just sit here waiting for the next lot of grub to come up. Something we can do. Bill, haven't you got any bright ideas? No. That was a waste of time asking, really, wasn't it? Pencils Brewery. I have a special person for you to meet. Now, I, I've never met this gentleman before either. He is, in fact, from the Tony Hancock Appreciation Society. Uh, he's come all the way up from uh, Essex, from Romford. Will you please give him a round of applause? We'll find out more about the guy and his movements as well. Give the gentleman a big round of applause. Thank you. That's done. Excuse the ladder, sir. What is your name, please, sir? 
Here's Dan Feet. Uh, I'm the president of the Tony Hancock Appreciation Society. And I'm very pleased that you're all here today. Um, talking about our membership, it's well over 1,500 members. And what amazes me, uh, our oldest member's 95, and our youngest is seven. Uh, and it's lovely to get letters from members as young as seven years old and up to 10, loving the, um, the work of Tony Hancock. Well, the common denominator, of course, of all of us here is that we all are Tony Hancock fans, of course. Now, if you could just tell me, if we joined your appreciation, what exactly do you do? Do you send newsletters out or do you have meetings or, or, or what exactly happens? Uh, we have, um, we send a newsletter out, a quarterly newsletter. Uh, we have a video, audio tape libraries, uh, many celebrities of um, honorary members. Uh, we usually have... Every year at Bournemouth, where Tony left Birmingham when he was three, and he moved down to Birmingham, up to Bournemouth, sorry. And um, their, their mother and father had the Durston Court Hotel, and we have a re reunion there every year. Uh, people have been there like uh, Patricia Hayes, Hugh Lloyd, and um, this year we had um, um, Kenneth Griffiths along that was in an ITV show, and well, Phil Collins is a member and he's helped the society so much. Bill Wyman, they're, they're all members and they all love Tony Hancock as much as these people here today do. I mean, Tony's uh, birthplace, of course, is uh, Southern Road in Hall Green. And uh, we're all rather proud of that as Brummies, aren't we? I think, I think we all feel a, a, a big affinity towards Tony as Birmingham people. Now, his spiritual home, as you say, was Bournemouth. And, of course, where did the, um, the East Cheam uh, railway cuttings come from in the first place? Can you answer that? Yeah, that, that, that was made up by Ray Gordon and Alan Simpson. Actually, there's not really an East Cheam, but um, they've they done it like the same as the Andam Racket. We, there's a pub where they used to meet afterwards. We had all that done up with um, photographs and um, new stuff of Tony. It, it's so much alive still, Tony Ankle. Um, I must say that, 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 that like the, some of the comedy today has got to go with swearing or politics in, in that branch. Yeah, with Tony Ankle, you never got that. It was just clean, funny humour. And uh, that, that's why he, he, he's kept his name. I think the essence of uh, Tony's comedy, I mean, you can tell me more so than I can tell you, was the timing of Tony, wasn't it? I, I believe that Tony's timing was uh, impeccable, and we'll have a chat with Dave Ismay in just a little while, a man who's got good timing himself, and um, Sir Harry Seacom, of course. Now, how do we get to join the Appreciation Society, if we'd like to, please? Well, you can write to me. Uh, I, I can leave some cards around, uh, same as with uh, Dave Sandals. It's got the Appreciation Society down here. Um, you can write to me or see, uh, uh, it's 426 Romford Road, you won't remember this, um, that's London, E7, 8DF, but I shall then leave some cards around anyway, and if you want to approach me, you're more than welcome. Well, it's lovely for you to come up uh, so far today, it obviously is close to your heart and it means a lot to you. Thank you very much. Give the gentleman a big round of applause, ladies and gents, thank you very much, sir, and we'll be uh, distributing some of your cards around. Okay, then we're asking a, co a couple of questions. I've got a couple of 11.52 extra AM t-shirts here to give away for you. Who can actually tell... Chit-chatting to the likes of you. I have an important engagement to keep. What engagement? 25 years ago today, I made a pact. Who oh, with? Her childhood sweetheart, Olive Locksmith. <laughs> when we said goodbye, we pledged to meet again. 25 years later, and today is the day. Where are you meeting? At the same place where we said goodbye. Outside Le Café de la Belle Marguerite, Chiswick. More Hancock as well. People are arriving uh, as we speak each minute. Good morning. I'm Paul Burrell from 11.52, Extra AM, afternoon show. It's my pleasure to... Uh, I haven't seen this guy for a long time. In fact, who remembers the night out when it was a proper club? Who remembers when you could actually go and have a meal and a good time in Birmingham City Centre and take your family and just have a good, clean fun? Right, anyway. Uh, you may remember Graham Powell from the night out and myself, but a man who quite often was our guest compare, and in fact uh, was a good turn himself. You all know him, fellow Brummie. Will you please welcome the very talented Dave Ismay. Thank you. Hello, Dave. Nice to see you. What a lovely morning. What a lovely crowd. Great morning. Couldn't ask for any better weather than this. And a lovely crowd too. Happy smiling faces. The only blot on the horizon this morning appears to be Tony Butler. 
who, who was questioning whether or not Hancock should have a statue in uh, Birmingham city centre. And uh, he said that Jasper should have one. And of course, Jasper will have one when he's dead, but not until then. Well, I, I was talking to my father about this coming in, and I, I, can, I can see sometimes people's um, points, but Hancock was just like worldwide comedian. And I think that sometimes in Birmingham, we are the greatest city, but sometimes we don't shout about ourselves enough. Would you agree with that, Dave? I think to a certain extent. You say Hancock was worldwide. Hancock would be 72 or would have been 72 yesterday. People are still buying the tapes in great numbers now. Um, people are still laughing at the humour and the comedy. That, that speaks volumes for what the writing was, first of all, of Gorton and Simpson, but the unique talent that the man had, because no one has ever recreated what Hancock did. The character has just been the black astrakhan uh, hat, the Homburg, no one has recreated that, the, the mug, the high-powered mug somebody described him as. Um, and I think today is a, is a significant step in, in the history of the, the ever, ever changing of uh, Birmingham City Centre. Does want to obtain any merchandise, contact me, because we've got badges, cups, mugs, we've got everything, you know, to make a nice little reminder for today. Before we talk about your involvement with today and, and what's happening over at the pavilions and all that kind of stuff, uh, you mentioned Turning Point there. Very briefly, just, just to outline Turning Points and what they're doing. Well, Turning Point's a national charity and they're working with people with drink and drug and mental health problems and they've got a, a, a clinic in Birmingham for people. So it's a very worthy charity and maybe if Turning Point had been going in 1968, it could have been somewhere for Tony to return to because that's, that's the main link now because we know Tony's sad end and sadly maybe today something could have been done to alter things and that's what Turning Point can do. They can help people in a situation drinks and drugs have uh, taken over their lives. So it's a very good charity and deserves a lot of support today from people. And they can do that by going to the pavilions where we've got an exhibition on which actually shows how the statue has been made. We've got photographs of it being cast to the, all the glass rods being put in. It's a fascinating exhibition and it details in Tony's work, Turning Point's work and the work behind the statue. So if you've got five minutes after the unveiling, go along to the pavilions in the high street. If you're not where Birmingham is, most people can tell you and just have a look at the exhibition and maybe drop a few coppers in the box for Turning Point. That sounds great. I mean, that's a great idea. How long does that exhibition run for? It runs until Saturday, so if you haven't got time today, pop in late in the week or tell your friends to pop in. It's there until Saturday evening. Do you know, I mean, it, I love being amongst Hancock fans because everybody just it loves all the, the lines and what have you. Now, I always admire people like you, uh, the gentleman we met earlier. Not only are you fellow Hancock fans, but you get off your backside and you do something about it and you put in a lot of hard work. Now, tell me a little bit about what you're doing with the Birmingham Appreciation Society. Well, mainly we like to make people aware of Tony's work. We don't want it to die. I think people as individuals know it's there, but we all like to meet, get together and share in the humour because I think there's nothing better than laughing together we're all laughing today and I think that's what comedy is all about sharing and having a good time and we do that with Hancock we've got an exhibition that tours around the world from here it will go to Manchester you know we, we want everybody to know about Hancock and that's what we aim to do and we want Birmingham to remember he was a Brummie and he was a Brummie and he was proud of that and he's still got family links with the city, the name Hancock still has links with the city. So I think it's a great honour today that we've got the statue. I'm pleased it's here. It's took me nine years of badging the council, but we're here today and it's a great day and a great crowd.